Hi, thanks for doing this. Um, on cluster munitions, you know, you talked about the uh, the dud rate. Um, you know, John Kirby in December of 2022 also talked about, you know, that the U.S. as a policy has concerns about, you know, cluster munitions being used. Uh, besides the dud rate, what, what are the other concerns that the U.S. would have if these uh, munitions are transferred to Ukraine? Thanks. Well, I, I appreciate the question, Jim. Again, I, I don't want to get out ahead of, ahead of any potential announcement. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, if and when a decision is made, uh, we'll have more to, to say on that. All right, let me go to Idris uh, from Reuters. Hey, um, separate from any decision or, or non-decision on the cluster munitions, um, last month, uh, Laura Cooper said that there were uh, issues with congressional restrictions and concerns from allies. Have those concerns been allayed and have those congressional restrictions been overcome right now? Again, separate from any decision or non-decision, have those hurdles been overcome um, as as we speak today? Yep. Thanks, Idris. Uh, and again, not to, to be obtuse here, but um, because, uh, you know, the DPICMs are under consideration. Uh, when and if we have an announcement to make, we'll be able to provide more details in terms of the process uh, to include the coordination on that front. But until a decision has been made uh, and something's been announced, I, I just don't want to get ahead of that that process. All right, let me go back to the room here. Let me go to Fadi and then come over here. So, General, so I'm not going to talk about the decision, but I'm going to talk about the process of consideration of these munitions. When did the Pentagon and the White House National Security Council start thinking about these as a potential aid for Ukraine and is um, this process of consideration related to any difficulties Ukrainians are facing in this um, counteroffensive and is it meant if a decision um, is made to uh, help them uh, uh, address some of these difficulties? Yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me just kind of break your question into two parts here. So in the first part, I don't I don't have a timeline to provide you. As you know, throughout the course of this conflict, we've had regular discussions with the Ukrainians, regular discussions with our allies and partners in terms of what are the kinds of capabilities that Ukraine needs on the battlefield. Uh, as I highlighted at the, at the top here, um, DPICMs are a capability that is under consideration. Um, while I'm not going to get into uh, this, you know, the specifics of those discussions, uh, I think what DPICMs bring to a battlefield is anti-armor and anti-personnel capability. So essentially, uh, it can be either loaded with shape charges, which uh, are armor penetrating, or they can be loaded with fragmentary uh, munitions, which are anti-personnel. Uh, so clearly a, a capability that would be useful in any type of offensive operations. I would note uh, that the Russians have already been employing uh, cluster munitions on the battlefield, uh, many with very, uh, which include a very high uh, dud rate reportedly. Uh, and so, um, you know, um, yeah, let's leave it at that.